van is full of everything that I need to start my cabinet project. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So let's unload this and get going. going for sure. I'm gonna be myself or I could be someone else. No one stopping me now. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the van build. If you watched last week's video, you know that I completed all of the walls in preparation to do my cabinets. So the goal for this week is to get the entire structure done and installed for my upper cabinets. This is something I'm pretty nervous to do. I've never done cabinetry and I know that I want my kitchen cabinets to be a little bit more recessed than my bed cabinets. There are a few little things that I need to touch up before I can make really precise measurements and figure out exactly what my design will be and make sure that I know where I want my light switch to be because I will have puck lights on the bottom of the stretch of cabinet. So I will see you when I'm ready to start my cabinet. I'm just gonna do something very simple. So what I am first figuring out is this. So first I'm just going to be screwing it two by two across the whole bottom of my cabinets. That's where I will be kind of placing the half inch plywood on top. I think this is gonna take longer than I anticipate. So I did 57 and a half, 55 and a half. However far I want them sticking out, I don't wanna be like running my head into them when I'm cooking. and sunny now, finally. Once I wait for some of my two by twos to be done drying, I'm going to cut what will be the very bottom of my cabinets. Uh, right now I'm just figuring out exactly how, <laughs> how wide I want them. So that way I can prep the bottom of my cabinets for the puck lights and stain that. And then I'm gonna start working on the upright studs for the cabinets. Those will also be two by twos. All right, I've decided I'm going to do 11 inches wide for kitchen cabinets, 13 inches wide for bedroom cabinets. If you don't like odd numbers, sorry. When your life's been put on hold for far too long. <laughs> when the sorrow and despair oh, is growing so well. strong. <laughs> there is so All right, I wanna show you what I've been doing all morning because along with cabinets, one of the things I need to do is get this extra wall in and I've been working for a while on it. I made a template of this arch of my wall. Anyway, after creating my template with cardboard, I transferred it onto my half inch birch plywood and for a while now, I've been making little tweaks and sanding corners down and I think, I think this is the fit. Oh! So close. I have a little bit more sanding to do. And then I have my wall. At first I didn't think about it. At first I thought whatever, yeah. Here's the deal. I just, I don't know how to explain this. The measurements are just, everything is so funky. I just lined up where this will be. And if I tried to make it straight measuring, let's say up from the ground, it looks completely wonky when I'm looking at it. So what I decided to do is actually just line it up with uh, my shiplap, which means that it'll look straight, but the measurements might just still be weird. And then I will precisely measure the upright studs based on where my like bottom cabinets are gonna be coming out. And then because there might be some irregularities in the sizes of my cabinets, I'm just gonna make sure that the faces are exactly the same and it'll just overlap any irregular, any differences in size, which will make it look very uniform. That is my plan as of now. Beautiful. Now I'm going to drill the holes for the puck lights. Can we stay here for a week? Don't forget that little trick of starting it on one side and once the bit goes through flipping it over and finishing the hole on the other. That really helps it from not splitting. 
down your whole fort. Because I've done that before many times until I learned that trick. I'll stay here for as long as I can. Um, I just put some pocket holes into my wall, so I'm gonna bring it out there and, and install it and see how that goes. That is snug. That feels so good. <laughs> so my plan is to sink these screws in pretty far for these um, horizontal studs, and then I'll just fill them with wood filler. I don't have a perfect size screw, so I'm just gonna make one and five eighth deck screws work. It'll be great. Oh, okay. If it's off from those lines, it's gonna be really noticeable that it doesn't look straight. So I'm using a combination of measuring and using my eyeballs. My vision. Nice. 11 and 5 eighths. What's 56 divided by 2? So I need 2. What I'm doing with these numbers is subtracting the width of a 1 by 2 because that's going to be what they're um, going into on my ceiling. My battery's about to die. So I have my three studs that will make up the two sections of my cabinet. Those I do want at a 90 degree angle. So I'm actually going to attach them to the bottom of my cabinet right now. See what happens. So I'm marking the very center. I'm going to be using pocket hole screws and then I'm also going to do one screw from underneath. Before I put those two by twos on the bottom of my cabinet, I did just measure and cut the one by two. That will be the top frame. I'm going to attach my two by twos to this first. Full stop. I believe I live in your thoughts. I think about I'm done with my second frame as well as my first. I also just went back and put in a few little self-tapping screws here coming from the bottom as well. Give up everything I had to run and grab a right angle attachment to make this a little bit easier on myself, so let's finish this up. Now just to be with you somehow. Unexpected love was found. All right, I came back inside to work for a little bit because it is legitimately freezing outside. On these, I am going to add a one by two lip where the front of the cabinets will be. I think these next few steps are pretty simple. Basically, I'm just going to use the Craig jig again just to attach the little edges so that um, nothing is visible from the outside. So I'll uh, let you know when all that little stuff is done. So as you can see, I've stained this and put these little edges on. But one of the things that I am going to do, just to make this look a little bit neater, is I purchased some two inch birch edging. This stuff is the iron-on. It has adhesive behind it so that this whole bottom just looks like one piece, one single piece instead of, you know, plywood, the lip, and the two by two. What are you getting into? All right, I actually grabbed the one that I didn't stain yet. Up, up in a painted cup, I will pour my love from a cloud above. So bright I can see the lights, taking you up and above the blue sky. Tastes good to be drinking all of the honey sweet brew of ours. Up, up in a painted cup, right in the sky like a firefly. Like a firefly. This is the cabinet that does not have the birch edging on it. And this is the one that does. Although if you can see this a little bit, I wish I would have sanded this down just a tad bit more so it'd be less puckered, but it still looks really good. Here we go. A little nervous. Oh. What I'm worried about is that since I measured them separately, that one bottom is gonna be like this and the other is gonna be like this. We will see. I'm really okay with it. They are perfect. I can't believe how good this looks. I honestly can't believe I just built this. So pretty sure that most people choose to have much larger cabinets, meaning like them sticking out longer. I don't have, it's only me living in here. I don't actually have a lot of stuff. I didn't mind making smaller cabinets so that I have a little bit more space or things feel a little bit more open. But I say that now. Let's finish this, huh? Super solid. 
What I want to avoid is sticking a screw up inside where I think any of my electrical is from my lights and it probably wouldn't be an issue but it's just something that I'm keeping in mind so I'm just avoiding <coughs> some of those lines where I know that my light wiring is passing through. They down my feet. They're in! I've got it right Check them out! I've got it wrong. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is pop in all of the puck lights. I'm gonna cut the hole for the switch and prep all of the lighting stuff so that I can hopefully wire a little bit later today. So, I think I've decided to put my switch here. So this is the switch that I ended up getting. I will link this below and it's super cool because it's a dual zone. So you have one input and two outputs. My input is coming from the bottom, so I'm just kind of moving them down to the bottom, and then my two different outputs. So one side will go over my kitchen, one side will go over uh, my bed, and that way I can, by the single switch, turn on and off my kitchen and bed cabinets. Yeah. This probably looks more confusing than it actually is, so just keep that in mind. This is what we got. This is going to be the switch input right here. And then it splits off. This one will control all of my kitchen puck lights. This one will control all of my bedroom puck lights. This is all 14 gauge wire. I am going to use these female disconnects that are for 16 to 14 gauge wire. And I saw the angels coming down. Now I'm going to put the male ends on all of these. I am going back and adding shrimp shrimp shrink wrap because you can never be too careful you know <laughs> looks like a crab on the back of the switch it'll tell you input and output this one's really easy because um, the output is obviously the ones with two I am going to bring these down and these up so that it can still be oriented correctly and make sense for my wiring so red to red Come on, man. My switch is wired. What I'm going to do next is wire all of my puck lights. So it's pretty late. I took a little break. If this is one of your first videos of mine that you're watching, I am not going to go through the detailed process of how I'm wiring these puck lights this time because I already did a full video drawing out diagrams and explaining exactly how I'm going to connect all of my puck lights. So I am doing the exact same thing. I'm using the exact same connections. The only difference is that I have basically two different sets of lights that I'm doing, but it's the same thing. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. I need you on my fire. Everything is wired. It's all done in parallel. Make sure that you're wiring your puck lights in parallel. So I'm going to connect the terminal onto this 14 gauge wire so that I can connect it to my breaker box. I do want to say that I know I'm like making this look easy, but it's because I've already done it before. So if this is freaking you out, if you're thinking, I could never do this, uh, yeah, you can. If I can, you can. Oh boy, I'm nervous. How beautiful. Almost forgot my fuse, but obviously remembered when I went down there. Where did I put it? Don't forget your fuse. And don't forget where you put your fuse. Here we go. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <gasps> yes, yes, yes. Oh. I am going to finish up the night by getting that tucked in the wall and looking all nice and stuff. There we go! Oh my, this is great. This is just great. Well, this project was really fun and I learned a lot. 
I'm also very excited for next week's video, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. I will be finishing my cabinets, and I've decided to go with a shaker style for all of them. As you can see, the lights have been working beautifully, and I'm really, really glad that I added some of the lighting under there because it really does make it so much cozier. If you learned anything or enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give it a like. Also, on a little side note, Akila and I are doing a giveaway in a few weeks on Instagram. I'll be supporting some of my favorite small business owners and putting some things together that I love and that I want to share with other people. So if you want to get in on that, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. But I think that is all for now. So you have a wonderful evening or day, depending on when you're watching this. And I will see you next week. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun